so in quantum computing what uh, a quantum computer works upon they they process a uh, in a quantum bit can be in the state of 0 and 1 at the same time it's not like okay. it's a, it's in one of the states it's in both the states at the same time right so, so yeah. this is why a new set of processors is needed because at a certain point of time after again point you cannot decrease the size of processor of a transistor i should say yes and uh, and there is an end to it you need a new way of computing a new way of processing and that's when quantum computing comes into picture yes right. quantum computing is one of the solutions which was presented and since people are seeing this as a viable option to yeah. uh, the decreasing size of the transistors that's yeah. why it's being uh, researched so much i i feel that this was of course not researched as much as it is right now it was it was, there was some kind of research that was happening before right in the 90s and even before yes. that they got related to quantum computing it, it was not that much prevalent back then yeah. because of course it was much more focused on conventional computers or classic computers at that point of time but now as we know that there is an end to most law and we are coming to that nearly to the end there is much more research that's happening in quantum computing now than it was before right yeah so the thing is uh, at that time what happened was like people knew if so they were speculating so they were thinking what if uh, we were able to use these uh, quantum mechanics principles and create a processor so what they did is they created uh, some of the algorithms uh, uh, to utilize that power they created these algorithms to see how uh, how much of an improvement a quantum computer can provide okay uh, so for mm-hmm. example there's this uh, algorithm called the grover's algorithm okay so the, so the two main algorithms which were pub- which which were very famous which is which are very famous in the quantum computing community are the peter uh, peter shor's algorithm and the second one is grover's algorithm okay so shor's algorithm is used for factoring uh, large numbers and the grover's algorithm is used for searching an unsorted database in uh, so searching have, an unsorted database yes so for example if you are you were to uh, so for example let's say you have 10 elements you know mm-hmm. set uh, in, in in a list mm-hmm. and you want to search one of them so the worst case scenario will be that the element will be at the last yeah for sure so you'll have to go through the 10 elements so this is the time complexity of this is o of n o of n so yes if if you were to search an unsorted data computer scientists will know this yeah you have to so basically go through the whole list, list to search for that particular element agree yes yeah. yeah so the grover's algorithm using the grover's algorithm uh, you can do that in root of n so if you okay. were to uh, yeah so if you were to search the uh, along those 10 uh, elements if you were to search for a particular element the worst case that uh, even if the element is at the last you will be able to find that element in root n time so, so just to, to sort. have sheer numbers i guess what you mean by that is that if there are 100 elements i would only have to search through 10 elements i'll get my result what i want 10 10 operations It, Yes, you'll only if need. If I have thousand or a hundred thousand elements, I would just have to do hundred operations. Yes, and I would have my result. Yes, in classical computers, you'll have to go through the like the, the whole, whole thing. thing. Yes, yeah, you'll yes. have to. Uh, you'll need a uh, hundred thousand operations, but in this right. case, you'll only need a uh, hundred operations. So this is the kind of speed up that we are uh, hoping to achieve. But I think. Uh, Uh, this it's also necessary to point this out because mm-hmm. there's there's uh, there's excitement uh, in this field but there is also a lot of uh, false hype in this field false hype okay yes so what i mean by that is you're seeing this uh, as a very uh, good power up like it's it's yes. a very yeah it's a very uh, elegant solution to uh, the the problem of Uh, sorting and unsort- uh, searching an unsorted database but the re- in real world why we have not been able to uh, apply this is because if you want to store 
these hundred thousand uh, um, let's say numbers, these mm-hmm. hundred thousand data the uh, data points, then you'll need to feed it to a quantum computer. Right. And in order, if you want to feed it to a quantum computer, you'll need n operations, a hundred thousand operations, right? You like okay. each one one by one. You'll have to feed it to the quantum computer. Mm-hmm. So this essentially makes the uh, the searching uh, uh, yeah. the searching as same as the classical computer because you're right. still using hundred uh, you're still using hundred thousand operations. Yes. So this this is one of these issues that we are facing in Grover's algorithm, and this is why we have not been able to okay. uh, use Grover's algorithm in real world. So storing has become a very big problem for quantum computers, and that is one of the reasons that they are not being able to be used. In, in this is in, one of the reasons. Yes. Okay. What are the other um, let's say use cases, or what are the other real examples where quantum computing is being accepted widely? You know, we see that IBM is one of the companies you know who is really yeah. into this. Google is, of course, catching up into this. What are the other real-world uh, use cases where you know quantum computing is being used and is growing? So, so there, there's this thing called uh, near near uh, future quantum computers. Okay, and uh, they focus on making uh, quantum computing possible the applications of quantum computing possible in um, near future okay mm-hmm. so one of the fields where this uh, will help is uh, cryptography in cryptography okay. yeah so what basically happens uh, in cryptography or the most prominent algorithm let's take the most prominent algorithm called the rsa mm-hmm. algorithm okay so in gist what it does is it utilizes the fact that it is hard that it is very difficult f- uh, to factorize large numbers mm-hmm. if you have a let's say a 100 digit number or a 200 digit number then it is very hard to factorize it. Factorize it, yeah. Yes. And uh, so in RSA, what they do is they take two large prime numbers and they multiply it. So multiplying is not a difficult process. You can multiply yeah. it. You, even your the smallest of uh, devices can perform multiplications very quickly. Yeah. It's not an mm-hmm. issue. They multiply it and the number obtained by that you use it as a public key. So even if you know that number, that large number, you won't be able to figure out what the original two prime numbers were. Because okay. factoring that large number is near impossible. And in factorizing is always has been a problem for quantum yeah. co- or, uh, normal computers to do. Right. So what they do is the public key will be the large number and mm-hmm. the private key with can any can be any of these two uh, numbers yeah any of the the two original numbers which were multiplied mm-hmm. together mm-hmm. so this is how they work but where quantum computers come in is uh, they were they are able because of their parallel processing power they are able to use uh, uh, the the these uh, mechanic uh, quantum mechanics principles the superposition mainly mm-hmm. they are able to use the quantum superposition to factorize that lar- large number quickly okay because so as i told you earlier so how does that help you know if you factorize it what would that yeah so as i told you earlier that uh, it's easy to do multiple to sum up, I, up. I to sum yeah. up yeah so mm-hmm. summing is an operation right yeah. so that operation can be any operation. So if you, even if you combine multiple operations, mm-hmm. uh, you can uh, still get that speed up through a quantum okay. computer. Okay. So that's why uh, the quantum. That's why there's uh, research going on to make the latest, uh, the new generation cryptographic uh, encryptions uh, resilient to quantum computing to quantum processors. Mm. 